I mean, what did I expect? Hey, what's up everyone? Paul from Great House Fun House. If like me, you saw the trailer for this and thought, hey, Mel Gibson's in this and he's done some good work in the director video world lately with Boss Level and Fat Man, which I reviewed. And what you say? It's directed by Mark Neville Dean, one half of the Neville Dean Teller duo that were behind the Crank movies. Crank 2 High Voltage being one of my favorite batshit crazy movies of all time. If you haven't seen it, get on in after watching me shit on Panama because Crank 2 was 13 years ago and any inventiveness Mark Neville Dean had in those Crank movies, that is gone. So what is Panama about? And I'm not even gonna write my own synopsis here, which I usually do. I'm gonna use Saban Entertainments. Mel Gibson and Cole Hauser star in the edge of your seat action thriller set during the political upheaval of 1989 Panama. When the US is on the brink of invading Panama, a former Marine, Hauser, is hired by a CIA operative, Gibson, for a top secret arms trade mission. Alone and among the most dangerous arms dealers, Becker, Hauser, learns the true nature of political power. Yeah, this synopsis envisioned a way bigger movie than this turned out to be in this no budget action movie. This had 13 production companies behind it and 35 executive producers. 35! That is nuts. That is wasted money. Uh, like I said at the beginning, what did I expect from a geezer teaser where ex-A-listers' careers go to die? We've seen so many of those like it before, from uh, Nicolas Cage, Liam Neeson, Steven Seagal, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, John Cusack, and the king of them all, Bruce Willis, who releases about four or five geezer teasers a month now. And by the way, if you want to go on a deep dive on all these uh, Willis cinematic turds so you don't have to watch them, uh, go check out Red Letter Media's take on his uh, DTV career. It is excellent. Mel Gibson's screen time in this is 15 minutes, tops at the beginning of the movie as he gets the mission rolling with all the uh, exposition needed and shows up at the end to kill a few bad guys and once in a while pointlessly narrates the movie. So I'm guessing maybe two, three days of work tops, probably net into a few millions. Not a bad day's work if you can get it. But you know what? Mel Gibson is still a good actor. He's got that grizzled old man, I'm too old for this shit charisma that still works for him. Brings his A, well that's pushing it, B game and even in turd sandwiches like this one. Our main star here is Cole Hauser, son of Crazy Man Wings Hauser. All I notice in this movie is what a charisma vacuum he is and that he should lay off on the just for men. So yeah, it's 1989 in Panama, the US is barred from supplying arms in uh, Nicaragua to the Contras. They make a deal with a colonel under Noriega to buy a Russian chopper for $10 million. In return, the Contras will give them Soviet weaponry and intel and use said chopper to potentially kill Noriega. So a uh, win-win for everyone. Becker gets to go through a contact who's gonna pick up the chopper for him, which will take a couple weeks. So Becker, while being in Panama City, his cover is to be a consultant at a casino. We meet Enrique, who's the contact brokering the chopper deal with Becker. They already wired him a million as a deposit that we've told he already blew on booze, drugs, and hookers. And from then on, it's about an hour of filler, just boring conversations and minimal action in an action movie. To fill up that time, they show us how much of a ladies' man Enrique is. We get this endless scene of their first meet of him talking about nothing with Becker while his three fiancés, one after the other, gets into the room to show themselves off. Becker go visit a refugee camp where we see freshly wounded people being taken care of and yet there doesn't seem to be any combat close by. And it gives Cole Hauser a scene to emote and feeling bad about the whole thing. 30 minutes in, we get our first action scene in the jungle. The contrast squad leader Becker is to hand over the chopper to. Gets out a boombox to score the bloodshed that's about to happen in full CGI mode, a throat slash, muzzle flashes and bullet hits. He even plays his machine gun as a guitar. 45 minutes in, you know what that means. Sex. Just two unsexy slabs of me just going at it from a meeting they had five minutes prior at a bar where Becker meets Camilla. Who will obviously betray him later on, but right now he's got such game, this Becker, such witty repartee. I'm Becker, what's your name? You're drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I am fucking blind. They even go for this, I could run away with you scene right after. Baby, I could run away with you. You know that? You gonna wanna get to know me first? Where clearly these two have zero chemistry. Another pointless scene we get is Enrique challenging Becker to a motorcycle race for some reason and says that if he loses, he loses the chopper deal and guess what he does? Loses. But you know what? Becker ain't gonna take that shit and takes back the million given to Enrique as a down payment, which from that escalates things to the colonel wanting everyone dead around Becker. He took my money. So get rid of him and anyone else close to him. 
get my million dollar back. Even Camilla, the hooker you met earlier, gets dead that we don't even see happen. We just see her lifeless corpse just resting against the wall. But we do get a funny scene where they intercut Becker having a memory of them just walking around as if there was this ultimate best memory he has of her when they just known each other for a few days. He runs after one of the guys who killed Camilla. Lots of camera shakes happening, makes it unwatchable during that chase scene. And a lot of the movies like that actually, just making you seasick. Oh my god, the score in this sounds like some early 2000s sub grunge that wouldn't have made the cut back then and certainly doesn't now. Now, which doesn't fit the scene at all. None of the music does in this movie. The Colonel poisons Enrique because he snitched and the snitches get ditches, telling Becker he was the one who put the hit on everyone in Becker's circle. So the final showdown is between the Colonel and Becker. He had Becker's sister-in-law kidnapped. Oh yeah, what I didn't show you at the beginning was how despondent over his wife dead Becker is, because of course they always have a dead wife that he blames himself for her death, and every night he sleeps on her grave. He's been doing that for the last year, I guess. It gives him a character death or something to make us root for him, which I just think is just stupid. So his sister-in-law shows up to take care of him once in a while and then it didn't even last two minutes and right away I knew she'd be back at the end for something and sure enough, Becker shows up at the colonel's place, threatens him, but finds out that Burns, the CIA guy who gave Becker the mission at the beginning of the movie, is of course in cahoots with the colonel. Everyone you ever care about seems to die, Becker. Burns? Your wife Sarah. You motherfucker, you. So they want to do a trade, sister-in-law for the million dollar, they do it, sister-in-law is safe. Couple scenes later, they track down Burns to get the money back, they kill him. <laughs> the Contra squad leader get his chopper, Becker is on vacation on a beach alone. The end. Man, I even got bored trying to encapsulate this movie. So, do I recommend Panama? Uh, no. The movie is mostly about the interplay between Becker and Enrique, which is bland and deadly boring. The fact that Panama is used for the background for this uh, action movie felt unnecessary. We do get some beautiful shots here and there, but that's mostly because of the location. There's some scene where I could swear it was filmed with a GoPro. I mean, you couldn't even get the lower thirds right using terrible fonts, and those are like the easiest thing to do in Photoshop and free for a no-budget movie. They couldn't even get creative with those. The music in this is terrible, sometimes almost louder than the dialogue is supposed to support. Selling this movie on Mel Gibson's name and cachet what's left of it is false advertising, but now most people, I would think, knows what geezer teasers are so they won't get suckered into watching this. Mel must still be a multi-millionaire, it can be about the money, and he's got Lethal Weapon 5 right now in pre-production to look forward to, so why waste your time with this trash? I'll never know. But then, who the hell wants to watch an action movie starring Cole Hauser? Nobody, that's who, so just don't watch it. I did so, so you didn't have to. I live to give, what can I say? And uh, Mark Neville Dean, give Brian Taylor a call, seems you need your buddy to make good movies. I give it one dumpster fire out of 10. So that was my review for Panama. Go visit all my socials at Grindhouse Funhouse in the comment section below. Let me know what was the worst geezer teaser movie you've seen so far, because uh, this genre of film will not die off anytime soon. More action movie reviews coming up soon, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching, and I'll say to you, ciao bye for now.